neuroplasticity, actually, that's where I'm coming from, is, is the idea of, of how plastic is the brain and how plastic and how malleable is the brain into old age. And by neuroplasticity, I mean flexibility of the brain to adapt to certain situations or to improve its functioning. The real question is whether or not age-related declines in cognition or in brain function uh, are inevitable. And what we've been finding in the past with a number of our studies is that this is not inevitable. This can be moderated and improved. Pyramid. There's the old way of viewing the older adult brain, which is viewing the brain as kind of like a rock. And as we get older, the rock hardens and your brain hardens. And if you damage it, you're not going to recover from it. You chip the rock, you're not going to recover. And similarly, it's less flexible. But uh, in recent years, we know that that's not the case. We can alter the functioning. This type of decline isn't inevitable, and we can, we can really improve uh, the functioning of older adults. Um, so we're going to actually give you some tasks, some cognitive like tasks. Participants in the study do different types of exercises about three times a week over that one-year period. We test them both at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the exercise program so we can test whether or not uh, their performance improves with uh, exercise. And we relate the performance on those tests to uh, brain structure and brain function results that we get from the MRI. So what we're doing in this study is we're looking at the relationship between exercise and how exercise can actually induce uh, plasticity, how exercise can actually improve your cognitive performance and improve your brain functioning. It's been known for a long time that exercise improves your, your heart uh, your musculature obviously reduces risk for heart attacks and, and those types of things. Um, what we didn't know until recently was how well and how effectively exercise can actually alter the functioning of your brain. That's the, probably the, what people find the most um, surprising is that, that your brain, the brain itself, the brain tissue itself is really affected by exercise. We know this helps healthy people, healthy, functioning, normal adults, but uh, whether or not it helps uh, people who are, have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, for example, is still a, a, an open question. And we believe that this may be one method by which people in, with those disease states can possibly reduce some of their cognitive deficits. What we're hoping is, is that this is a method that people can take upon themselves to not only reduce their risks for certain cognitive pathologies later in life, but also just to improve their overall uh, cognitive and, and brain health, even if, even if they don't feel as if they're at a high risk for any certain pathologies. Exercise is good. <laughs> Exercise is beneficial, not only for your overall health, uh, bodily health, but also for your mind and your brain. I think it has changed my outlook. I mean, I've always tried to exercise as much as I possibly can, and uh, I think that what we've shown here is that even little amounts of exercise can really go a long way in benefiting your body and your brain. And um, I think that that's changed my outlook on it. And even if I'm really busy one day, I can at least take the stairs instead of taking the elevator. Um, those types of little things add up throughout, throughout a day and really can benefit um, benefit people.